children obey your parents in the law, for this is right. Uh, thy father and mother, which is the first commandment of promise, that it may be well with thee, and thou mayest live long on the earth. And your father can both not your children to wrath, to bring them up in the nature and the mission of the law. Servant, be obedient to them that your master, Lord Jesus Christ, with fear and trembling and sink of your heart as unto Christ. Five verses from the sixth chapter of the Peter May God.
believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Believe it thou this. When the Son of Man shall come in his glory, all the holy angels with him, then shall he sit upon the throne of his glory. For him we gather all nations. He shall separate them one from another. As a shepherd the sheep from the goats. And he shall set the sheep on his right hand, but the goats on the left. Then shall the king say unto them on his right hand, Come, ye blessed of my father. Inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was a hungered, and you gave me meat. I was thirsty, and you gave me drink. I was a stranger, and you took me in. Naked, and ye clothed me. I was sick, and ye visited me. I was in prison, and ye came unto me. Then shall the righteous answer him, saying, Lord, when saw we thee a hundred and fed thee? A thirsty gave thee drink. When saw we thee a stranger and took thee in, or naked and clothed thee? Or when saw we thee sick or in prison and came unto thee? And the king shall answer. And say unto them, Verily I say unto you, Inasmuch as ye have done it unto me, of the least of these my brethren, ye have done it unto me. And I heard a voice from heaven saying, Unto me, Blessed are the dead which die in the Lord. From his fall, yea, saith the Spirit, that they may rest from their labors and their works and follow them. And he showed me a pure river of water of life, clear as crystal proceeding out of the throne of God and of the Lamb. In the midst of the street of it, and on either side of the river, while there the tree of life, which bear twelve manner of fruits, and yielded her fruit every month, and the leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations. And there shall be no more curse, but the throne of God and of the Lamb shall be in it. And his servant shall serve him, and they shall see his face, and his name shall be in their foreheads. And there shall be no night there, and they need no the light of the sun, for the Lord God giveth them light, and they shall reign forever and ever. Let not your hearts be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe in God. 
you also in me. In my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you.
of Brother James Irwin Marshall. He lived his life. He's paid his dues. You know, David said on one occasion, he said, if I had wings of a dove, he said, I would fly away somewhere to be at rest. So the other day he took a flight. Brother Marshall took a flight to go to be at rest with the Lord. And I tell you, I tell you, I look forward to that day too when I'll take that flight and go to be with the Lord. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I want us to liven up, liven up. This, I think Brother Marshall would want us to be lively, lively here uh, during this time, during this time. He want us to, uh, to liven up like, like our God is real. Yeah, the God we serve is a real God. And yeah, yeah, we can trust Him and we can depend on Him. The order of service for this celebration we will have a prayer by Reverend Paul Lacey, Scripture Old and New Testament by Pastor John Washington. Then we will have a selection by Brother Leroy Woods. Then we will have remarks. Then we will have two minutes, two minutes please. Two minutes please. And then we will have special remarks by Eric G. Marshall, the son. Can we come in that order, please? Can we come in that order? The, all of those names I call, are you here? Raise your hand if you're here. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Let's let the celebration begin. Amen? Amen. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord. Let us bow. Gracious and eternal God, here we are again, Lord, in this same set. Master, we just want to say thank you. In spite of what has taken place here, God, we, we know that your word is true, that you would never leave us nor for oh, yeah. Master, we call on you today because we know that you are God of a second chance. A God of all chances, Master. We have a chance to make it through this sorrow and, and our we know that it's going to come through you. Now, Master, we ask in the name of Jesus just come and Touch, Lord. Yeah. Only that you know, only one that you that know how, dear Father. Yeah. You said you had to leave us, but you will leave us comfortless. Yeah. 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 You will send your yeah. Holy Spirit to be our teacher oh, yeah. and our guide and our comforter. Yeah. Oh, yeah. So, Master, we call on the Holy Spirit this morning to come and just sup with us. Give us understanding, Father, realizing God that what you have done. Is your will. And we pray now that you just touch this family. You know their hearts are heavy. But Lord, we pray for strength, peace, and understanding. Just touch them, God. Give them the desires of their heart, Father. Let them know this day too will pass. But you said in your word, joy comes in the morning. God, we waiting on in the morning to come and give us understanding. Now, Master, as we come, we want your will to be done, Master. Just touch this family in their time of bereavement. We know it's going to be some hard days, but God, you said in your word that you will check on us, look in on us, and send your Holy Spirit to be our teacher and our guide, God. We just want to say thank you today. Thank you. Mr. George has lived a long life, a plentiful life, a 
all his sons and daughters, God, you have blessed them with. Now they can go on and live the legacy that he desired for them. We ask now to just touch this family. In the name of Jesus. In the magnificent, precious name of Jesus. We ask it all. Amen. Testament scripture coming from the vision of Psalms, Psalms 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou prepare the table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointed my head with oil. My cup runneth over. Surely, Goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. New Testament scripture taken from the Gospel of John, chapter 14, beginning with verse 1. And let not your heart be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house, of many mentions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. That where I am, there ye may be also. And whether I go, ye know. And the way, ye know. Thomas said unto him, Lord, we know not whether thou goest, and how can we know the way? Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto me. No man cometh, no man cometh unto the Father, but by me. God's word for God's people. Right.
Sometimes if you stay to yourself, you keep people out of your business. 
It's always found work. And George was a worker, and that's one of the things that kept him out uh, the spotlight. He was a worker. Uh, I drove all the old cars that he had. And they had tubes in them. When he tear them up, that's where they would stay. He never fixed nothing. Lawn boards, weed eaters, whatever he broke. It was going to sit there until one of the boys come home and repair it. But he could tear up something. Else. He could definitely tear up something. But he always worked. And when he worked at the steel place, he um, knew the value of materials. And George could uh, recycle. And he recycled cans and aluminum and, and made good money at it. But he would give it all back. George would give it to no goods in the community that would borrow money from him. He knew they wasn't paying back, but he let them have it anyway. Uh, I've been back here about 17 years now, and he was a pastor of the church when I got here. And as time go on, I found out that George was really the primary supporter of the church. He gave back to the church, and he basically paid his own salary. And with the money that he made, he gave it back, but he never told me that. And some things people don't have to tell you. You can figure it out on your own. And I figured out that he gave and he gave and he didn't care. But like I say, you could consider him as being a little funny. But uh, again, uh, I told him one time, he told me, he said, boy, I got a good wife. I said, yeah, you do got a good wife. Anybody put up with you? I said, he got to be good. And I said, we all got a little like daddy. And he said, yeah, he said, we do. You know, he would share things about the daddy. But we would have a lot of fun sometime and talk. And I would... Uh, would, would let him know. I would go visit him on a Sunday and I'd sit on that stool with him and I would tell him about the things that was going on at the church. And I, I wanted George to be proud of us for carrying on because he left the church and uh, he was sick and he left the church and I wanted him to know that we, we made some changes. Changes are good. We needed to make some changes at the church, but we didn't change the major thing and George was concerned about that. So left the church and we want him to know that the church is in good hands. We got a good pastor, we got good members, and 90%, 95% of the members are good and you'll never get 100% of anything. That, that, that 5%, we don't even worry about that 5%. We was heard Jesus uh, said in one occasion that he put aside the 99 to go look for the one, but in Mark's chapter, we take care of the 99 and we don't worry about the one. You know, over there, so that's our thing. But at this time, uh, Billy, I sure hate to put you on the spot, but you need to stand for just a moment. Could you please do that, brother? This young lady here. And I said, girl, she said, well, I can sit down and eat beside him now, you know. And it takes a special person for special people. I know that Derma was special to her mother. She took care of her, the women need, and for Millie to take care of her dad the way she did. And he was so private till I could see the time that if she'd have walked in the room and saw him with his clothes off, he'd have had a fit. He was a fussing person because he was like my dad. And but for her to go and take care of him, and every time you go over there, she was just like a mother hen to him. Millie was able to do things for him that his wife didn't even do for him because she was gone on. And to see her to take care of him and to protect him, and there were some concerned people that would stop, wanted to stop by and see him. And there were some busy bodies. Some people wanted to come by to be nosy to see what she was doing and what she wasn't doing to him. But that was your business. And I appreciate the family for protecting her and protecting him because people don't care for the same reason. Some, some are concerned 
And like I say, some want to come and see exactly what you're doing and what you're not doing and don't give you a quarter in Mexican money. They won't even give you a support, won't give you anything, but they want to come run your business. But this family took care of him and they protected him. And, and I know that you had hands on, but there was a monetary thing in there. And I know that many of you did your money back. It takes everything to make it happen. So uh, I, I look at it, then Dexter would come up and he'd clean around the house and he would work and cut grass all over the place. But uh, the hands-on is important. But your money was important and it shows the love in this. And now you're going to have a mother and father, but you have each other. And just take care of each other. Don't worry about other people, what they say about you. Don't worry anything about it because people are going to talk with you, do good or whether you do bad. So don't worry about it. But I appreciate you and I thank you. Let the church say amen. amen. I'm just honored to be here today on uh, giving honor to God, first of all. Giving honor to the pastors and the ministers on the desk. Uh, I'm just happy, delighted in the fact that I can come and stand to speak in behalf of my dad. All right. Uh, I was able to bring him down here. He's not in the best condition, but he said he wanted to be here. And when I told him, I spoke on it last week, and um, he said, yeah, I want to go. I said, really? And uh, I waited a few days later, mentioned it to him again. Matter of fact, I didn't mention it to him. He mentioned it to me. So I knew he had to be here. And so I'm, I'm just honored at the fact that um, he's here to celebrate. He don't know everything that's going on, but he's aware of some things. Now, one thing that I do know is that everybody that grew up down here grew up to know the Lord Jesus Christ. And that's one thing I can say about how we were raised as a family. Whether we chose to live it 100% or whether we chose to take just a little bit of it, God is still in control. And one thing that Uncle George did for me, I remember one summer I came down here, and that's a memory that has stuck in my life. Uncle George, he said, boy, you're going to be a preacher one day. I said, no, I ain't. <laughs> All right, man, I ran, I ran, I ran, and trust me, I went through the deepest of the deep and the darkest of the dark. But I'm here to tell you today that God got me preaching. ran through the woods, me and Preston. Oh, I got him in so much trouble while I was down here. Oh, Jesus. Preston, I'm sorry, man. I'm sorry to get paid for what me and you got into. Well, I told the truck up one time I came down here, Aunt Dorothy, she, Aunt Dorothy, she fed me till I blew up wide as this podium up here. She made sure that they gave me everything I wanted while I was down here, because I know if they sent me back up north and I was mad, it was going to be a problem. Big Mama did everything she could do to make sure that she spoiled us right. And I think all my cousins down here thought that we were favored, and that wasn't the truth. It was just the fact that because, you know, Dad was sending us down here, you know, everybody looked at us different. I'm like, why are they looking at us like that? You know, dinner raised to beat me up. I'm telling the truth now. Him and Preston, they used, to, they used to come together and just kind of team up and have little things going on, you know, throwing me in the pond and knew I couldn't swim. But we had fun anyway. And those are memories that have stuck with me for the rest of my life, and I shall never forget. You know that that helped me to be the quality man that I am today. George has put some things in me. I mean, y'all don't know. He, he was sowing in me when y'all didn't know he was. You know, when I was busting hoes and watermelons, he didn't whoop me, he whooped Preston. <laughs> so thank you, man, for taking those stripes. By his stripes, I was here. Okay. So I just want to thank and praise God for the opportunity to come and speak before the family today. It certainly gives me an opportunity to tell you guys how much I appreciate and love each of you. The rest of my brothers and sisters couldn't be here, but I told them I would represent. 
And so I'm here to tell you I love you, appreciate you all, and whatever we can do, let us know. I bring you greetings and honor. It's definitely a privilege to be here. My name is David Stokes, and I'm representing a nephew from the Huntley side of the family. Um, and your greetings are uh, Alan or G. Bob Huntley from Kansas City, my Uncle John, and I'm Shirley's son, and I'm Dorothy, uh, married a great man, a part of this Marshall family, just like Uncle George Ivy. Um, from memories as a child, impressing some of you may remember me, I used to come down here a lot of times with Grandfather Isaac Huntley. One thing I saw is then I always saw the support of how they worked together with the Huntley family so strong in keeping the church, the church going. And one thing I appreciated, I remember as a child, a lot of times going up the hill to Uncle George's house and Aunt Selma, and they would feed us and take care of us just like we were their kids also. I also give my sympathy to the family for Sister Deborah. Uh, I wasn't here last week. But one thing that has always encouraged me is how strong the Marshall family is. But a few years ago, and I think Sister Millie was there too, they brought Aunt Selma to Gary, Indiana. It was for Aunt Frankie B's funeral. I think it was 09. And they drove her up there. And I think Aunt Dorothy came with them, and I drove Martha and my mother up to meet them there. And I have a picture of them in the hotel. It was at the same hotel. And that's just another thing that just contests how strong this Marshall family is. And I just say from a portion of the Huntley family, stay strong, we love you, and you've always been a good encouragement. God bless you. Praise the Lord. Amen. To this Marsha family, I want to say that I love you and you all are a great, a great family. And also you don't have to worry about Brother George anymore. He's in good hands. Because I read in here where he accepted Jesus Christ as his Lord and Savior. So the scripture says to be absent from the body is to be present with, with the Lord. Amen. And not only to be present with the Lord, but one day he's going to bring Brother Joy's spirit back and unite it with a body that won't get sick and won't hurt anymore. Right. And somebody said, and what a time, yeah, what a time that will be. So cheer up, cheer up. He's all right. Yeah. He's in good hands. Yeah. He's in good hands. He's all, he's all right. Yeah. The programs present to us now is acknowledgement and resolution from Sister Renee Johnson and a selection from Minister Darius Marshall. Y'all forgive me, I'm, I'm moving too fast here. I'm moving too fast. I'm seeing what I don't see. Amen. Amen. I was rushing to get over here. I got caught in the Lane College homecoming. I thought I wasn't going to be able to get here. I guess my, my heart is still racing.
your heart, love, and soul will always be with us dearly. And so, and no matter where we are or what we do, this may seem like tough times. This may seem like tough times, but it's also a glorifying one. And one that we will never forget. God had a plan for them. And it took them to a better place. A place called paradise. And as they left, they put all their faith and trust in us. And I wish we must follow in their footsteps. And love of one another and care for one another. Each other the way they did. And, and all of them. And all of them left something with us. Their f a family, memories, can't forget the food, and their love. It will make them proud for us to do that. And also, it will help us get to the promised land with them as we, as they call, as the Lord calls us home. The Legacy of a Great Man, George Ivory Marshall. Webster's Dictionary described great as ability, quality, or eminence, considerably above the normal or average, a great or distinguished person. It wasn't his size or stature that made him great. When you looked at him, what did you see? A man who worked to support his family, a man who worked from sunup to sundown, a man that wasn't lazy to hard labor, a provider for his family, a leader in his community. Because he had sons who were watching. He had sons that were looking up to him. He had sons that were following in his footsteps. He had Dwight, Preston, Dexter, Eric, Jarvis, Carmen, and Marquitas who, who he had to be an example for. So when you looked at him, what did you see? A man who loved his wife. A man who never raised his voice in anger to her. A man who never raised his hands to hit her. A man who cherished her, adored her, and honored her. Because he had daughters who was watching him. He had daughters who he didn't want them to settle for any no good bum. Or just another man in britches because they saw how a real man treated his woman. He had Sandra, Deborah, Wanda, Millie, Trilla, and Jesslyn. He had to be an example for it. So he set the bar high because his girls were watching. So when you looked at him, what did you see? A man who loved his siblings. A family man through and through. A man who understood the importance of brotherhood. A man who was a protector of his sisters because people were watching how the marshals treat each other. Because neighbors were watching how the marshals stood by each other. Because he was going to raise a family of 13 that he had to impart those same values and kinship and togetherness within them. He knew together they were stronger, together they could withstand any adversity, Together, no one or nothing could come between them. So when you looked at him, what did you see? A man after God's own heart. A man who loved God with all of his might, all of his strength, more than life itself. A man who knew he wasn't the head of his household, but it was God who was in control. A man who taught all of his children the way of the Lord. But the Bible says in Proverbs 22 and 6, Train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. Because he had 13 that were not going to be lost to the streets. He had 13 that the devil was not going to have his clutches in. He had 13 to raise in the fear of God. So that's why these 13 never had to be bailed out of jail. That's why 
these 13s didn't get hooked on drugs. That's why none of these 13 are alcoholics. Many people looked at these 13 and said, there are so many. Why so many? How could one man provide for so many? But he did, and it wasn't through public or government assistance. They may not have been rich with wealth, silver, and gold, but they had so much more than what money could buy. They were rich in love, rich in family, rich in togetherness. They were the marshals, and you didn't mess with them marshals, because if you bothered one of them, you felt the wrath of all of them. And even though God in his infinite power and wisdom saw fit to call mom, Deborah, and now dad home to be with him, many may believe that this circle is now broken. But could this circle be broken? No, it cannot, because this is a bond that would never be broken. We are the marshals, stronger than ever, together forever. Thank you. Now, how am I going to follow that? <laughs> hills which come with my help, my help coming from the Lord, yeah. giving honor to whose honor is due. What can I say about my pops? Yeah. Yeah. My mind takes me back about pops. Bear with me because uh, almost every time I say, I tell the story, I cry. But I know Dwight is going to tell me not to, to cry. But it's not up, so I won't. I remember like, we was uh, in a softball tournament, and I don't know how Dad knew I was there because I don't remember telling him I was going to be there. Yeah. I remember my cousins Harvey and your, your brother Leonard. They was hitting home runs, and everybody else was hitting home runs. But I was striking out, or I was hitting the ball in the infield. Again, this was practice. Again, I don't know how Dad knew I was there. The next time I was at bat, I heard Pops before saying, Ricky, hit a home run. And you know what I did? I hit a home run. I hit a home run for my dad. Even though it was in practice, I ran around the bases. I flipped my bat like Willie Mays, and I ran around the bases like it was the World Series. And don't say it, Cumber, it's not Boddicker. That's an inside story for the family. They already know. So this story takes me back to the spiritual side. We practice, we're practicing right now in life. We're striking out. Yeah. We're not hitting home runs. Yeah. And everybody else is hitting home runs. Everybody else is rounding the bases except us. Yeah. But remember, I know my I didn't tell my dad I was there. But he <coughs> but your heavenly father knows exactly where you are. Oh, yeah. 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 Don't get weary in your well-doing. In your due season, you will reap if you faint not. Listen to that voice, that steel voice, telling you it's time to hit that home run. Yeah. Only my pops, moms, my children, and my wife are allowed to call me Ricky. I would like, at this time also, to thank my big sister Billy for the great job. Yeah. She did with my dad. There's nothing you can put your head down for. You did an excellent job. Every time I came there, Pops looked good. And I want to say thank you. You did as the Bible told us to do. The Bible told us to honor our mother and father. For the other brothers, this is the time for us to put our foot to the pedal. 
to the gas pedal. We're going to miss Mommy, Sister Deborah, and now Pops. Let's keep, our, let's keep in our hearts what Pops and Moms taught us. They train us the way that we should go, and we should not depart from it. Brothers and sisters, we are better together. I had part two of this message, but time won't allow me to go through it. It was a time that Dad and I were went to uh, Harvey Illinois for a revival at the Church of God, Church of God in Harvey with Uncle Evans. Ah, George, that place looked mighty clean to me, but Dad still wouldn't stop there though. And the title of this message was, what you're praying for is at the gate. I was a young kid then, but I still remember that message. I think I was about maybe 10 years old or less. But that, still, that message still resonated in my heart. What you're praying for is at the gate. It's, about the, it's in Acts 3. About the man, about the beggar. But when you have silver and gold, have I not? But what I have, I give unto thee. So when you have a moment, please study and read that chapter. Again, Pop told us the ways of the Lord. Thanks for the good advice you gave me. The best advice you gave me, Dad, is Ricky, you need to get up and get you a job. <laughs> thanks, thanks, Pop, for the whoopings. And Sandra, you can tell them all about it. The last thing I want to say is I love you. And I want to tell you, yes, I did roll that water up down the hill. <laughs> I don't speak like Angel and Eric, so I'm going to read mine and I'm going to read it fast, so you're going to need to listen fast. <laughs> I too would like to thank my sister Millie, Camilla for the comfort and care she has given our father. Your work there is done. Mom is pleased. I may not seem like mom, play the tambourine like Deborah, teach and preach like father, but today I would like to tell you why this family is important. And, and I want to tell you the half Half of that reason has to do with dad and the values and principles our parents instilled in us at a young age. And, thanks, the, the game we played, hold me up Lord, it is those values that allow our niece Nikisha to care for our mother, our sister Deborah. Our, her mother, our sister Deborah, allowed my sister Wanda to care for three of our grandparents and allowed our sister Trilla and Camilla to care for our parents. Sometimes it's the smallest thing that a parent does that sticks with the child. Playing ball with father was one of those things. Long before dad became ill, I would think about the, the times he stopped whatever he was doing picked up a makeshift bat and played ball like he was a kid. Now on this summer evening, he was returning from walking, working out of state in his big rig. We could hear him, his truck, crossing the bridge and coming up the hill. We halted the game and ran to the edge of the road. With our thumbs up and our elbows pulled down, we wanted that truck to make the loudest noise it could. parked his truck and the game resumed. He could have attended to his garden or his flower bed because he could have gone inside and see what mom was preparing. If mom was preparing his favorite meal and if you know dad for more than three days you knew it was a tall glass of tea and whatever mom made that wasn't left over from the day before. <laughs> 
never, he never could have, or he could have even helped us gather all the animals that had gotten out because they had given up hope that we were, they would ever be fed again. <laughs> that day, he didn't do any of that. He came over and picked up a limb that was a makeshift bat, and he wanted to play ball with us. You had to know that it was semi-serious, so when he let down his guard a little bit, it was always a treat for us kids. Over the years, I have tried to remember if Father even hit the ball. I knew Dad was a strong man from all the hard work, and if he ever hit, hit that ball, it was going to wind up in Cousin J.C.'s front yard. He played, and in the end, that's what mattered to me most, and us all. He, what he did, he always, has always stuck with us. Whether it was reading the sermon, or having confidence in me to repair some of the things that he did, pray. Right? <laughs> uh, those values and principles that our parents taught when we thought we weren't Listen, is what allowed us to stop what we were doing and give comfort and care and love to our loved one. This is why this group, my family behind me, continues to be and will always be so important to me. Thanks. Sister Renee Johnson will come with the acknowledgement and resolution. And selection will be from Minister Derek Marsha. And then the eulogy will be from Elder James Marsha. And then the procession, the recession. I want to say to the Marsha family, thank you for allowing me to be a part of this great celebration. And may God bless you. And may God keep you. Resolutions. Let not your hearts be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. John 14 and 1. Blessed are the dead which die in the Lord. From henceforth he said the Spirit. That they may rest from their labors and their works do follow them, Revelations 14, 13. Whereas, Elder George Ivory Marshall professed a hope in God at an early age at the Marshall Chapel Church of God and was the pastor and an active member of the body of Christ until his health failed. Whereas, the passing of our beloved brother in Christ is the will of God and there is a human tie that has been broken which bleeds the heart of we are encouraged in the words of Jesus who said, I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. Therefore, be it resolved that we embrace the family because all of us have a common bond that connects us. Be it further resolved on the 8th day of October 2016 that a copy be given to the family and a copy placed in the church archives. Humbly submitted, Marshall Chapel Church of God, James T. Marshall Pastor, and Lawana Marshall Secretary, Meeting, Tennessee. To the Marshall, Jenkins, and Harry families, lovingly we remember George Ivory Marshall. Special thoughts and heartfelt prayers are with you and your family during this, your time of bereavement. We are deeply saddened by the passing of your dear father. We share your sorrow and are, and are upholding you in prayer. Family, we know that your loss is deep and your sorrow is great. Take consolation in Jesus' words. I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. Hold on to the promises of God. He is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. 
And I heard a voice from heaven saying unto me, Write, Blessed are the dead which die in the Lord from henceforth. Yea, said the Spirit, that they may rest from their labors, and their works do follow them. Revelations 14, 13. Submitted glad tidings, Church of God in Christ, Hayward, California, Bishop J.W. Macklin, Senior Pastor, Second Assistant Pres Presiding Bishop, Missionary Vanessa J. Macklin, First Lady, and the Glad Tidings Church family. We also have resolutions from the Whitehall Church of God and the West Bemis Missionary Baptist Church, both of Jackson, Tennessee. Acknowledgements. The children of George Ivory Marshall would like to express our sincere gratitude for your many expressions of kindness during the most difficult time. Thank you for your calls, visits, cards, flowers, food, and most of all, your continuous prayers. May God continue to bless and keep you. We, the siblings, would like to thank Camilla for the continuous years of 24-hour care she extended to our father during the last journey of life, the Marshall family. Know we serve an awesome God. Amen. Come on, somebody bless the Lord in this place. Amen. Hallelujah. Come on, bless the Lord in this place. He's worthy of glory. He's worthy of honor. Hallelujah. We magnify your name, oh God. We serve an awesome God. How know how many know our God is great? Oh yeah. Hallelujah. Yes, oh, yeah. The splendor of the King. He's clothed in majesty. Let all the earth rejoice. Let all the earth rejoice. He wraps himself in light. And darkness tries to hide. And trembles at his voice. And trembles at his voice.
to the bereaved families. We just thank God for this day. Another chance he has given us to witness another homegoing celebration. Amen. A great man, a person of George, Abby Marshall, a man that loved people and one who was not selfish. To know him, as his brother has already said, has some strange ways. Every one of us does. Amen. God has uniquely made all of us. Just imagine if all of us done the same thing the same way. Huh? This world would be more chaotic than what it is. But God, He made us all differently. He gave us all different talents and we exercise our talents and our gifts in different ways. Oh, Joe, I told me one time, he said, boy, I said, one day I'm going to preach like you. I said, don't try to preach like me. You preach the way God has ordained you. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. And I don't know what I mean. Yeah. I went to Marshall Chapel and uh, went with my granddaddy was there, uh, Everett, and he told me, he said, boy, I said, you're the right hall, but you're in the wrong pen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. So yeah, I, I was in the Baptist church then in fellowship with Pastor Brewer and Pastor Washington. You know, but Elder George don't miss arms up. He just light up when I walk in. He boy sure he good to see you. You got a message for him. All right. And he just opened his his arms and you know and, 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 and he accepted us for who we was, who God had man who he had ordained. He just didn't look at us as being Pearl and Raymond son. He didn't look at us as being one of them old Baptist folk. Some folks still don't accept it, but that's alright. You know, because God has called, God has ordained that the word be preached. Amen. The gospel is the only thing that's going to save people. Amen. That would say, Brother John, personal Savior too. Amen. I'm not going to be with you long. Amen. But God bless George Marshall to make an impact upon people's lives everywhere. Amen. And as somebody said, there's just something about those, those Marshall men. Amen. We meet no strangers. Amen. When I was a little lad, one Saturday morning to South Fulton. You know, and I rode in that big truck, not knowing that that one day I too would be driving a big truck just like him. Oh, yes, Amen. When he would ride up the road, you know, Preston, we'd be out there too. <laughs> you know, and when I ride down the road night and, and cars pass by, little kids be, you know, I mean, just little bitty fella, you know, doing this right here. And I remember the days when I to do it yeah. when we be on the side of 18 highway picking cotton. Yeah, yeah. Amen. Yeah. A lot of y'all don't know nothing about that. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. But 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 Ella George was yeah. he was special in so many ways. Yeah. And and sometime I I remember a few years ago, you know, when when all of the con trees and fruit trees when it bared so plentiful. Yeah. The pecan trees on the property that they buried and El George didn't have to walk that far, but he drove his truck out in the field when it was muddy. And when I go across that that and, and field now, like when I cut my grass, I ride across his ruts. Amen. Old ruts been there for five or six years now. Amen. But every time I ride across those ruts, I remember, Lord Brother George come out here and he just spent some donuts. Amen. But, but, but God allows 
people to come in our lives and make impact on our lives. And somebody's already said, it's not the big things, but it's the little things. Amen. Big things don't move God. It's little things. Amen. And Brother George was a, a small man of small stature. Amen. And God here eulogy. But in order for somebody to be eulogized, you don't have to, you're going to have to do something. Amen. Look at here. This man did something. Thirteen. Beautiful children. Amen. Children who have grown into fine young men and women making an impact on society. All of them got jobs. Working, not looking for handout. That means something. Amen. Now y'all give me just a few minutes. Amen. To the word and then we're going to let you go. Amen. Hebrews. Chapter 4. Verse 15. It says, For we have not an high priest which cannot be touched with the feelings of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted like as we are, yet without sin. Amen. Family, we just want to encourage you for just a few minutes here because it's not over. Amen. Although dad is gone, mom is gone, and sister gone, the life continue to go on. Yeah. Amen. You have to continue to function closer together now. Amen. As a unit, as a family, and love one another and care for one another as your dad and your mom did. Amen. You can't let, amen, uh, the absence of a loved one because though they be absent in the body, amen, they're still present in your heart. You would, they will live forever. Amen. I, 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 my mind, you know, there was the hardest message. I wrestled all week long, riding up down the highway. What can I say to encourage this family? Went to bed on last night, tossed and turned all night. Got up this morning, tossing and turning again, and the spirit said, "Just go out those." Get away from it all. Yeah. Went outside, washed my car, washed my truck, washed my wife's car, came back in and said, all right, yeah. this is it. And my mind went back when I was a little child. Yeah. How my mom, she said, son, she said, I don't know if you'll get married or I don't know if you'll be single. She said, but you need to know how to cook. You need to know how to wash. You need to know how to keep house. So my mother taught me how to cook. And when I got big enough, I went to the field and I found out real quick I didn't like the cotton field. Amen. They hang that old toe sack on you. We call them Kroger sack now. Burlap bags. Amen. But, 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 Brother Herman, real quick that the field wasn't for me. So I asked mama, I said, mama, I said, can I stay at home and babysit? I'm number five of ten children. I said, can I stay at home and babysit? She said, yeah, boy. She said, if you stay, you gotta cook. I said, I think I can do it. So they go to the field and they work and they come home at the end of the day. Do I have a pot of brown beans? Skillet of cornbread. Amen. Some sweet potatoes stewed in the pot. Amen. And what we called back then was a pudding. Y'all young folk don't know nothing about that. Amen. But I would take a box of Dunkin' Hind cake mix. Amen. The recipe was real simple. A box of Dunkin' Hind cake mix, two eggs, and a little milk, and put it in the pan and watch it work. Amen. Yeah. 
go through. Amen. So I just stopped by today to remind your family that you don't have to go through this alone. God is standing by your side. God will give you strength if you will trust your grief. Amen. Unto him. Take advantage of the grace and the mercy that God offers unto you. Amen. Jesus Christ. Amen. He took on our sin day. Amen. He went to Calvary in our state. Amen. I believe Isaiah said that he was wounded for our transgression. Uh, he was bruised for our iniquity. We are here. So family, you don't have to tackle this thing by yourself. Because I heard Reverend Al Green say the other day that when you have troubles, don't cry. Oh yeah, when you have heartaches, you sometimes wonder why. But he said don't worry, don't be discouraged because God is standing by. God's standing by you today, son. Embrace one another. All right. 
Amen. Because God loves you. Huh? God loves all of us. If God didn't love us, he never would have done what he did through Jesus Christ. So all of us, we're all connected. We all came from the dust of the earth. Amen. And I don't care what kind of name you done painted on you, but we all was in the same predicament. Lost. Messed up. Amen. We didn't have to go looking for sin. We came here with it. But you don't have to keep it. You can give it up. Jesus Christ opened the door so that we could come back into his loving. His loving embrace. Amen. And family, we say, look up. God hadn't done any wrong. Amen. If he delayed his coming, we too will pass this way. Amen. It's appointed unto me. So that means, you know, we got doctor's appointment. We have other appointments. We can break them. We can put them off. But this is one appointment that we cannot postpone. We're going to have to meet. Amen. And when we meet, when it is his time to call and our time to answer, my prayer is that we will have made preparation to meet him. Family, God bless you. God keep you. Your dad, he set a good example. Even when he was young, back in at, at, at Marshall Chapel School, Dwight, Deborah, and I was classmates. Me and Dwight got scolded all the time because when we done wrong, Miss Adam would always tell us, Dwight, James, George, and Raymond didn't act like y'all. <laughs> So we had to straighten up. So love one another. Yeah. And at the same time, lean on the Lord. Amen. And he will see you through. Amen. Amen. Partition. Now in charge. Now in charge. birth to the earth and the world. Even from everlasting to everlasting, thou art God.
stolen by the brother. We therefore commit this body to the ground, earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust, looking for the resurrection at the last day and the life of the world to come through our Lord Jesus Christ. And who's coming to judge the world, the earth, and the sea, shall give up their dead, divided with those who sleep in them, shall be changed and be made like his glorious body, according to that power by which he is able to do all things. unto you for hope. Lord, we thank you, and we just praise you in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Just complete service to see yourself dismissed.